um, for here in Sydney will be New South Wales and it will be um, defined, I can't tell you the actual name of the statute so you have to go look for it. Um, the one thing I'd say about parking tickets is the whole system is largely automated um, and I'm not familiar with too many people that have effectively uh, defeated them until you get to the presumption of summons. What we are going to do with the Roman document forms is show how administratively you can rebut the presumptions of the summons. The back of a parking ticket is itself usually a summons by default that if you choose not to have the matter paid, then it, it effectively performs the role of uh, a summons by structuring you as the defendant, uh, by making it a, uh, an action, uh, a, a form of action to a cause of action, and that um, uh, the matter, once you, once you ignore it, it will be heard as if you, um, that a, an injury was performed, uh, that you are the defendant, um, that it nominates the uh, vehicle, um, and it will be handled um, in your absence, which is why people who ignore parking tickets uh, find that there are arrest warrants. So I would suggest that it's not a matter of no contract. It's not a contract. Um, uh, it is going to be, um, I would say to you, the question is, you could argue um, that it is a mistake to have been done, but I, I'm sorry I, that I can't give you specific words on an answer to the rebutting of presumptions of parking tickets. I haven't spent enough, so if I talk about something like this and I haven't really thought through an example, um, I don't want to give uh, the wrong impression. Well, I'll, I'll throw out to those on the call and those that listen later, uh, if, if people have examples of dealing with this in an efficient manner, then let's see if we can get up a forum on University of Acadia where some examples are there. Okay, let's get to the next caller and we'll come back to uh, the next que questions in the chat. Here we go, this is uh, Dean. Hello Dean, can you hear us? Yes, hello, yes I can hear. Hello. Hi, Frank. how are you going? Pretty good. Um, um, thanks a lot again for uh, everything you're doing. Um, have a question about um, tax warrants. Okay, and uh, I live in New York and uh, yep. we, ha we have what's called uh, school districts and I get, uh, my understanding is they're private corporations and they are they have a board and this board issues uh, an instrument called a tax warrant and they go through the, they issue this warrant to the tax collector of the town who takes the from the tax roll sends out the notices and collects the money right so okay so I'm just trying to you can just kind of critique my understanding here for a moment. Now, it appears to me that the uh, members of the board are signed as trustees. So it kind of tells me immediately that this is a trust, correct? Yes, but they'd also be a board of guardians as well. That means that they are presuming the role of, of, of a power of executorship based on the, um, the models that we've spoken about in the, in the uh, 9th century. Go and have a look at um, the history of, of guardianship actually on uh, positive law. Go and have a, a look at um, uh, one. Let me, get, let me pull this up. Sorry, just to interrupt, and I want you to continue, but I just want to get this to you as a reference point Is on. Uh, Oneheaven.org? Yeah, oneheaven.org. One hyphen, O N E hyphen heaven.org. Go to positive law and then go down to. Um, uh, Article 326, Guardians, Brackets, Board, Council. Okay? Okay. I end that, okay. So, um, real quick, um, what I'm just trying to, uh, I guess my simple question would be, who, in this relationship, who is the trustee, who is the executor, who is the beneficiary? Okay. Is that further uh, the council, yeah. the council board, the board is claiming a a, a power of executor. Um, mm -hmm. You are considered a ward, 
uh, and a, um, uh, a beneficiary and the, uh, the agent that's collecting is a trustee, an administrator, holding the agency powers of the board. Okay? Right. Okay, I see. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, that makes it much more clear. All right, well, thank you so much. Okay, good on you, Dean. Good luck. All right, have a great, great day. Bye. Thank you. Okay, let me answer a couple more questions in the chat, and then we'll go to the next caller, um, uh, East Pennsylvania. So one sec. Uh, the question is, uh, Gesu 9 says, can you point to a chart or hierarchy list of the actual ruling families? Uh, I mentioned there were more than 13. I did mention the uh, families called the Council of Ten uh, coming out of, of Venice. Uh, the Council of Ten is supposed to be the families that control behind the scenes the uh, Jesuits. Um, the Jesuits themselves are a suborder of the Franciscans. Uh, if people find that surprising, they should go and look at the history of the fact that the first Jesuits were ordained in a Franciscan basilica in Venice. And uh, it is a- acknowledged by the Jesuits themselves that uh, Ignatius Loyola and his followers took the holy orders in Venice. And therefore, if they took the holy orders, they must be Franciscans, even if the official Jesuit sites don't admit that. Um, I don't have a chart. There are a couple of sites that have it. Uh, go and search the Council of Ten. Uh, look for the name Farnese, F-A-R-N-E-S-E, and hopefully you'll see that list. Maybe we can get something up on University of Acadia, but other than that, I'm sorry, I, don't, I can't give you the background of that straight away. Uh, The question uh, Guest44 asks is, is it possible to send questions in prior to the call for next week? Is there an email address to send it to? We don't have an email for the call, but it's a good idea. Um, Maybe we could get uh, a list up there for questions that we can hopefully answer during the call. Um, I'm going to continue to the next caller, and then I'll keep going with the questions in the chat. So we'll just uh, unmute. This is uh, East Pennsylvania. East Pennsylvania, can you hear us? Yes, Sebo. Hi. Um, I got one answer for Alpha 91999. He needs to put a monument. Or what it, what it is, it's at least three large stones, which is a claim. It's called a claim. Okay? And then in the old days, they would draw the monument. And they would hide it somewhere that makes the claim on the land so that nobody else can make claim to that land. Okay, it could be, it could be more than three stones. Nowadays, you could take a photo of it, but don't put it out in the public. Okay, um, also, uh, if, you want to get me in, if you want to get in contact with me, I can get him in touch with a gentleman which is actually using, using our system, even though he is a declared... Uh, He's declared, um, oh, uh, I can't remember what, what the term, um, Freeman. Okay, right. he's using our system a lot, but he's declared Freeman, but he's using, he's using the Arcadia as, right. as the base, and he's winning. They threw his court out of case, his case right out of court. Uh, I'm trying to get him online with you. But uh, if, if, if he'll give Ron, um, type to Ron, and... Uh, and Ron, give him if you. Sorry, Ron, but if you'll give him my, um, you'll take his phone number. I'll call him from home, and I'll use the secured line so we can talk. And I'll and I'll turn him over to Pathfinder, and the people up in Canada. Okay, Very Frank. Good. Here's a. And, are you Illuminati? Just, I was just going to say I'm, I will be. Can I speak to you after the call? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Far away. Okay. Um. Good. The Illuminati, the Illuminati, could could this be? Now there's two different forms of them: Rosicrucian and the students of Rosicrucianism. Rosicrucianism is the is is the ones which preach the five 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 yeah no five hundred million people only deal. Yeah. I mean it's a beautiful beautiful concept up to that cutting over cutting it you know to a major factor you know cuts cuts the population down. 
to like a six to you know, not a six, but one six to what it is now. But um, could that be could that be the same basis as the Illuminati? Yeah, like, it is. is let me just clear up because the word Illuminati, thanks to um, that uh, very wealthy uh, cut and paster uh, Dan Brown, uh, has become you know ubiquitous. People use it all the time. Let me just qualify what the word Illuminati actually means and what what it relates to. Okay. 1782, 1783, uh, Iceland, which is a whole series basically of active volcanoes, uh, a, a string of volcanoes called uh, uh, Luki, Laki, which in, in their language uh, means um, Satan, exploded. It caused a dust cloud that changed the temperature in Europe by a factor of about two or three degrees, created a mini, like a snap freeze. It caused uh, complete drought and something in the realm of one in five or something like 50 or 40 or 50 million people died of starvation. They do not include this in the history books. Right. They do not include this in the history books. And the reason they don't include it is in 1783, the world was humming along prior to this uh, event where the industrial age and what they were doing by throwing people off the land and putting them into slave factories meant that yes. right throughout Europe, uh, the people were, the nobles were running away from the church. They basically said the church had ended. This was the, this was the new age, the age of enlightenment. But when this event happened, Venice found a way to get control back. And what they did was they sent out an invitation, the first time in history, they sent an invitation to all the princes that had disavowed the church and the prime, primary power of the Magyar elite families in Venice. They sent an invitation out to the industrial elite, the new wealth, for the first time. They sent an invitation to the intellectuals that previously had been uh, at the behalt, behest of, of the wealthy patrons and the church to come as equals. They sent out um, to the scientists that prior to this had been hunted down and ostracized and kept in small scriptoriums and had never really seen any benefit for their research. And they brought them all to Venice to celebrate the largest orgy in history. And I mean orgy. Sex, human sacrifice, complete and utter decadence. And there, over these ceremonies, they all inducted them into being a knight, principally a knight of Malta, sovereign knights of Malta, or in one of the other knights that they created. And they all died and were reborn literally through the ceremony that became a pervasive ceremony in the Freemasons. And they became the Illuminati. And that is the structure of patronage that still exists today. And it is so effective. It's why these people have never lost power since. That's the Illuminati. Sorry, keep going. I know, I'm just asking, is it the same as the Rosicrucianism? Because they, they basically, a lot of the names do coincide. It's and all aspects of the same thing. Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism, Knights, Sovereign Knights of Malta, they're all tied in together. Okay. All right, that was, that was just a question I had. Okay, uh, yeah, give me a call afterwards. All night. Okay, okay. Uh, let's keep going, and let's see. We've got a couple more questions here, and then we'll get to the, to, uh, to the next caller, uh, which is Ron again. So we'll just quickly kind of get to what we've got here. Uh, we've got a few more minutes. We're running a bit over time, but we'll try and wrap up in the next 10 minutes. Um, let's see if we've got any more questions here in the chat. Uh, let's see. Any more questions? Um, okay. Question is, uh, what's a proper form schedule of fees? This is a very important question. I'm glad Guest 39 asked this question. People have put schedule of fees in before and they're completely ignored. 
They're completely ignored because the form of what a schedule